Hi everyone. Welcome back to Crochet Blessings. Um, thank you for all of our returning subscribers and we also welcome all of our new subscribers. Um, if you haven't subscribed to Crochet Blessings, be sure to um, hit the subscription box, uh, button and the bell on there and then you'll get all of my notifications and uh, also don't forget to share it because the more you share it then the more people hear about it. Um, the crochet blessings, um, I've explained a little bit about things um, on my page, uh, on the regular page, um, but I, I wanted to reiterate a few things because there's been a lot of talk in the crochet, uh, different crochet page, pages from fellow operators who uh, have their own pages on Facebook that uh, say that Bible study and um, and God and, and all that has nothing to do uh, with crochet. Well, first of all, that's okay for your page, but for my page, it does. Um, God gifted me this page. He uh, gifted me the ability to, to do what I have to do, and he's called me to do this. Um, I'm not in any way, shape, or form cramming this down anyone's throat. You have the right to push the stop button and not come back to my page at all. Um, I will very clearly state in the titles that it's a Bible study uh, video versus a yarn video. Um, there, you know, there's no hidden agenda. Everything's out there and open to see, and you're welcome to join us. We'd love to have you join us, and if you're not interested, then just pass on by my, my channel and, and go about your business. Um, the Bible study I talked about doing was Whispers of Hope with Beth Moore, and today's going to be a little bit long video because of the fact that um, the, the introduction... Um, is pretty lengthy. Uh, it kind of gives you a layout of what the um, the book is about, and I've got all of my scriptures pre-marked so I can go in and um, uh, get to them easily. And I, I, I've tagged them with some um, post-it notes so it's much faster. And um, this is the first time I've ever done a Bible study with adults. Um, I've taught children's Sunday school class before. Um, for two or three years, I had a toddler's class uh, for, it was supposed to be three, four, and five-year-olds. And I started out with like four or five kids at first, and then it grew in the time that I was there to having 17 children by myself. Um, and for that age range, that's a lot of kids, um, and it it, uh, it it can be emotionally, uh, emotionally and physically draining at times to have that many children um, when when you're not used to it. But luckily, it you know it just built up a little over time. I just I'm a little nervous because I've never taught an actual adults Bible study before, so bear with me. And, um, you know, I take suggestions uh, from everyone, um, you know, and, and my husband's really good with Bible study as well. And, you know, I can get some hints from him as well. So um, I'll go ahead and start now. And this is supposed to be a 10-week um, Bible study, but I think it's probably going to take a little bit longer um, maybe a little bit longer because of the fact of the, the introductions long. I'm not sure if all of the Bible studies are, um, are just like one page, like this first chapter is or not, or if some of them can be multiple pages. I haven't looked that far into the book yet because I wanted to really be, be prepared and going through that introduction, it took me a couple weeks to kind of weed through things. Um, I have ADHD, so sometimes it's hard for me to get my 
brain to slow down and just stay focused on one thing. So um, I figured out a way I can do that um, and everything to keep my mind focused so I can get it done quicker, hopefully anyways. Um, the introduction starts with 70 days of praise. Um, I'll do my best to speak up. Um, um, it says sometimes a format can change or uh, sometimes a format can help us organize our thoughts, especially in a morning prayer time when we're just waking up. I'm asking you to consider adopting the praise, P-R-A-I-S-E, format for your prayer time during the next 10 weeks. Um, the format will guide your journaling each day. I trust God to individualize how he desires to use this handbook in your personal life. I'm certain of two things. Prayerless lives are powerless lives, and prayerful lives are powerful lives. God will bestow riches beyond measure. Count on him. Don't get caught up in trying to fill space on your prayer sheets. And God will honor what you write from your heart. Enjoy God. May he become your delight. For simple memorization, the following format is based on an acronym of the word praise. Praise begins your morning prayer time with praise. Psalms 22.3 tells us that God inhibit, inhabits the praises of his people. Sincere praise from your heart will invite God to pull up his chair and become your audience. You might repeat to him a few of the attributes the word records for him. Tell him who he is. God already knows, but he still likes to hear. Okay, and in Psalms 22.3, I'm going to read the verse. And then in my study Bible, it not only has the verses, but it sometimes has, uh, down on the bottom of the page, it has like little footnotes that help explain the verses a little bit better. So I'll be um, doing that as well if I have any footnotes for it. Okay, so the first one is Psalms 22.3, and I have the um, NIV uh, Women's Study Bible. Uh, 22.3 uh, says, Yet you are enthroned as the Holy One. You are the one Israel praises. So God is enthroned as the Holy One, and He is the the one that Israel praises. So Israel praises God. Let's see if there's any notes down here on the bottom. Yes. Uh, two. For 20, um, chapter 22, for the verses 1 through 31, it says, This great Masonic psalm is fulfilled in Christ on the cross. The suffering of the victim is depicted in verses 1 through 21 as the triumph of faith is portrayed in verses 22 through 31. Jesus quoted this psalm of victory from the cross. In verse 1, see Matthew um, 27 verse 46 and Mark uh, chapter 15 verse 34 now the little Bible things at the bottom I'm not going to go and search those out and all that I'm just going to read the little footnotes that go along right here with this um, because I'd, that would be a lot of detail to go into and those, those little footnotes if you have this Bible like I showed you um, then you can look them up later in your own at your own convenience and again at the end of the um devotion i'll make sure you know what bible i used and what um uh bible study book i'm using and um it's also on the crochet 
the Crochet Blessings 2019 page. At the top, it's got a picture of my Bible and um, what it what the box looks like because that's what you'll see when you go to the website where I ordered it from, which is, um, I think it's christianbooks.com or something like that. Um, I've put all that information where the pictures are at and everything. Um, okay, so we're done with that verse. And I'm going to turn the page here and go on to our next section. Um, okay, it says, he's wanting to make sure we know who God's making, uh, wants to make sure that, that we know who he is. Uh, praising God helps remind us he is fully able to do anything we could ask or think according to his will. Tell him how great he is and why you think he is great. Um, you might repeat to him the words to a hymn or worship chorus. Don't try to fit it into a mold. Just praise him with your heart. And um, one thing on that I have to say is when I was able to work before, um, I might be busy in office doing 101 things, you know, but something would pop in my head and I I knew it was like, okay, thank you, Lord, for giving me this thought. Thank you for the reminder. Just little things. And you hear someone gets, uh, someone has a family member get hurt or sick or whatnot and immediately pop in my mind, I start praying for them. I might have been busy doing work but I was still praying at the same time. So, and, and it takes practice, and not everybody, you know, does it that way. Uh, every religion's different. All of our beliefs are different. I'm not asking you to believe the way I do. Um, that's your choice, but you're the one who has to make the choice. I can't make it for you. Um, I, I am a Christian, um, and I believe that Jesus Christ um, was born from the Virgin Mary, and he um, lived on this earth as a human until the day he was crucified, and he was in uh, his tomb for three days before he rose again and ascended, uh, or, uh, well, he was on the earth for, I believe, uh, I think I learned, we learned in, at church, it was 40, either 40 or 50 days from the time he had um, risen from the grave. And then he ascends to heaven. Um, I, I believe that um, the only way that you can become a Christian is to acknowledge Jesus as your Lord and Savior and to accept him into your heart which means accept his ways and um, you know um, do your best to um, follow him reading a scripture um, trying to help others know more about God um, you know whether it's inviting people to church or uh, going door to door, knocking, witnessing. Um, I'm not explaining it very good. I'm not used to have to explain it to adults. Um, and I, I say it a lot because my thought gets a little stuck sometimes. So, uh, okay, so let's move on. Anyways, uh, okay, basically, what the Beth Moore is saying is she doesn't want us to try to fit everything into a mold. She wants it to, she wants it to be our own thought process. And in the back of each um, video, or not video, in the back of each of the devotion page, it has where you read and you look up the scriptures and all of that first. And then it has praises and it has repentance and acknowledgments and intercession, whether it's intercession for yourself or for others, 
um, supplication for self, um, which I think that would be intercession for yourself as well. And then equipping ourselves. And my husband said that the book of Daniel is the book of equipping ourselves. So um, that may be another Bible study another time. Um, I had a lot of praises this last week and everything. So that's why my page is full. Um, the Lord's been good to us. And, um, you know, I, the, this whole week was so overwhelming with good things that happened that we didn't ask for. Um, and I won't go into details because I don't want it to seem like bragging or, or uh, I don't want to sound improper, but um, we just had a lot of people bless us this week last week and um i also did get to uh, the honor of taking one of our families uh at our church to the hospital last week uh he had t uh they they did a sonogram on, on his heart at the doctor's office i'm not sure exactly what that's called i think it's an ekg but when they did the sonogram, they could only see one blockage because they did it without the dye test at, in at the doctor's office. So they scheduled a surgery for him, and he needed somebody to be able to drive him and his wife over there and then drive his wife back home and then drive her back over there to get him the next day and uh, bring both of them back home because she can't drive. She doesn't even have a license. Um, she She's not physically able to drive. So anyways, uh, I, I, I did that for them. And it the doctor came out of the surgery and explained to me that um, his heart, it comes out like this and then it splits off into like a Y. This heart, or the side of the heart, had an 85% blockage in the middle here, so then the veins down here weren't getting the blood flow at all. Uh, very, very minimal blood flow going through these little ones here. And then on this side, it was the same thing, but this side didn't show up in the um, uh, in the sonogram picture because they hadn't run the dye test during the sonogram one. They just did a regular sonogram on his heart. So, had they not run that dye test during the surgery, or had he had a heart attack before they got both of those blockages opened with and put stents in place, then he would have had what's called a massive heart attack. And one of the nurses that helps my husband with his dialysis training this last week said that it's called the widow maker because when you have two... Um, lines blocked off like that and there's not flow going into your in and out of your heart the way it's supposed to then it um the, it causes such a ma massive heart attack they call it the widow maker and um because no one survives it and the doctor said as as um as large as this man is that well um, for lack of better way to say it that he wouldn't have survived the surgery at all so hopefully that gave him a new lease on life and and everything and and he'll feel better now that everything is all open back up but that was kind of a blessing for me this week um that i got to go be with them and keep his wife focused and not nervous and stuff and uh, she took a book and she read a book and um i took my crochet like i always do and um, I had my phone with me too, so that's that's about all I do. Okay, well I better get back to this um, so we can get through this first initial Bible study. And like I said, the others after this they shouldn't be real long, and um, I'll work on it. But I'm hoping to do one once a week. But it might take a couple weeks depending on each of the chapters, and I'll try to let you know. 
ahead of time. Um, let's see. I'm going to wait through that part. Okay, um, the praise, R is for repentance. After you've spent several minutes in praise and worship, enter a time of confession and repentance. I teach this sequence because in Matthew 6, 9, and 6, 12, Christ taught the disciples to hallow God's name first, then ask for forgiveness for uh, forgiveness for sin. However, I've experienced times when my heart was too full of sin and conviction to begin to praise. You probably have too. Sometimes, based on Isaiah 59, 1 and 2, you may need to begin your prayer time with repentance rather than praise. Okay, so Matthew 6, verse 9 and verse 12. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay. Um, Matthew six, verse nine says. This, then, is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Okay, so I went ahead and read verses 9 through 13. That's basically, um, it's the Lord's Prayer, but in the NIV version. Um, and it says down at the bottom, verse 9 through 13, the model prayer illustrates how to pray rather than prescribing necessary words to use. See the chart, Lessons from the Model Prayer. Um, in that's in the in the Bible over here on this top page, which is on page one two six five in the um, women's study Bible that I'm using. Um, and it says the Jews did not address God directly as Father, but used this personal title to describe God's relationship to Israel or to refer to him as creator our father uh, was a little or was a new title used by Jesus who chose the term Abba carrying the more intimate sense of daddy and invited all who belonged to him to do the same See in Galatians 4, verse 6. And we're not going to go to that. Um, we're not going there. Okay. Okay, the next verses um, were Isaiah 59, 1 and 2. I forgot my glasses in the bedroom. One and two. Okay, Isaiah 59, verses 1 and 2. Surely the arm of the Lord is not too short to save, nor his ear too dull to hear. But your iniquities have been separated you from your God. Your sins have hidden his face from you so that he will not hear. Um, and that's 
Sin, Confession, and Redemption is the title at the top of that chapter. And um, in Isaiah 59, for verses 1 through 8, so it would encompass verse 1 and 2, God's people were doubting his goodness and power in their experience of distress. The prophet put the situation in its proper perspective. The Lord had not changed. He remained the all-powerful God. Instead, the iniquities and sins of the people had separated them from God. Iniquities indicated moral crookedness or perverse perversion in verse 2. Sins referred to missing the mark in verse 2, and the people were walking in crooked ways and were missing the Lord's target or mark for their lives. That's what that means. That's the little version of that. I'm sorry, this table is wobbling a little bit. I keep bumping it with my leg. Um, my husband has the other table in his room with his uh, machine on it and stuff because it's more sturdy. It doesn't wobble. Uh, okay, so um, now we're going to go on here to the Isaiah passage indicates that when we rebel against God, all he wants to hear is repentance from us, just to say we're sorry. That's all repentance means, says that, Lord, I'm sorry, I, I please forgive me I was wrong in what I did um, I shouldn't have ate so and so's candy bar I know that's an empty uh, uh, I know that's a simple easy little thing um, it, I know it sounds stupid to an adult um, but it's just an easy reference you know um, okay so David's prayer in Psalm 51 is an example. His life had been so full of sin. His prayer of repentance simply started with the words, Have mercy upon me. As you become increasingly sensitive to the Holy Spirit, you will discern times when your prayer life needs to begin with repentance rather than praise. Your heart will feel burdened with sin and anxious for relief, no matter what. Practice a time of confession and repentance daily. We gain victory over sin by allowing God to treat our problems in their earliest stages. Resist letting anything build up. Confess sins of the thought life such as wrong motives, negativism, a critical spirit, or even right words with a wrong heart. Let God catch things in early stages so we can be spirit-filled people on a daily basis. Remember, the only thing whiter than snow is a freshly cleansed child of God in Psalms 51.7 that first I didn't I missed that one when I looked through earlier okay so Psalms 51 7 says hear me you who know what is right you people who have taken my instruction to heart. Do not fear the reproach of mere mortals. Be terrified by their insults. Let me see if there is anything for 51 that I need to include with this. Sorry, pages are sticking together. It's still so new. Okay, so here uh, in verse or in chapter 
51, there's no additional notes for that. Okay, then acknowledgement. Having praised him and been purified by him, you are ready to submit to God's authority. Acknowledge his right to rule and reign in your life every day. Then willingly and deliberately submit yourself to his lordship one day at a time. And day, no, any day not surrender to the authority of the Holy Spirit will automatically be lived in the flesh. See Galatians chapter 5. Okay, Galatians chapter 5, oh, it's a long one, um, it's 20, 25 verses, okay, so bear with me, um, it says freedom in Christ, that's the redhead titles um, of the chapter for that part, it says it is for freedom that Christ has set us free, stand firm, then, and do not let yourselves be burdened again by a yoke of slavery. Mark my words. I, Paul, tell you that if you let yourselves be circumcised, Christ will be of no value to you at all. Again, I declare to every man who lets himself be circumcised that he is obligated to obey the whole law. You who are trying to be justified by the law have been alienated from Christ. You have fallen away from grace, for through the Spirit we eagerly await by faith the righteousness for which we hope. For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision has any value. The only thing that counts is faith expressing itself through love. You were running a good race. Who cut in on you to keep you from obeying the truth? That kind of persuasion does not come from the one who calls you. A little yeast works through the whole batch of dough. I am confident in the Lord that you will take no other view. The one who is throwing you into confusion, whoever that may be, will have to pay the penalty. Brothers and sisters, if I am still preaching circumcision, why am I still being persecuted? In that case, the offense of the cross has been abolished. As for those agitators i wish they would go the whole way and emasculate themselves then the next title is life in the spirit you my brothers and sisters were called to be free but do not use your freedom to indulge the flesh rather serve one another humbly in love for the entire law is fulfilled in keeping this one command. Love your neighbor as yourself. If you bite and devour each other, watch out, or you will be destroyed by each other. So I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the flesh desires what is contrary to to the spirit and the spirit is what is contrary to the flesh they are they are in conflict with each other so that you are not to do whatever you want but if you are led by the spirit you are not under the law the acts of the flesh are obvious sexual immorality impurity and debauchery uh, idolatry and witchcraft, hatred, discord, 
jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissen, dissen, dissensions, fat, factions, and envy, drunkenness, orgies, and the like. I warn you, as I did before, that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking, and envying each other. And then the little footnotes here says in uh, chapter 5, verse 1 and 2, again, Paul's challenged his friends in Galatia to stand firm in their faith and not to return to the bondage of the law. Christ died to set free. While the law continues to enslave, in Second Colossians 3, 3.17, the law is a heavy yoke, a daily burden for those in bondage. However, for the believer, Christ's yoke is easy and his burden is light in Matthew 11.30. There is great freedom in Christ. In Chapter 5, verse 13, it says, Justification by faith does not require works, but it does result in godly living. Paul also believed that faith without deeds is useless in James 2.20. However, he saw examples of extremism in the Galatian Christians. On the one hand, some Galatians were too legalistic. On the other hand, some were totally lawless. The freedom of Christ is freedom to choose what is right. Paul states that the right thing to do is to love and serve one another in 1 Colossians 9.19. I think that's Colossians. I'll have to look that one up uh, later. Okay, so... It's not, the reason that you take one day at a time, first of all, is nobody's perfect. Um, we cannot, we cannot be perfect and absolutely 100% good every minute of every hour of every day all of us in some way shape or form in our lives fail it's not that god wants to be a, a cruel god or a punishing god he just wants us to realize hey we shouldn't do that and he wants us to be willing to say God, I'm sorry. You know, I I guess I shouldn't have done that. I was a little too hard on so and so. So maybe I should, you know, call him and apologize or or go see him and apologize or something. Um, you know, um, or say, for instance, sometimes we see so many people in need that we'll just walk right by them and look away from them because of the fact that you know they're out there they're begging and there are so many people who have been caught begging for money that really didn't need it um that was their way of life and so it makes people hesitant to offer money to those who are out there who really actually need the money they're sleeping in the street um, they don't have a home 
uh, no vehicle, you know, they, they barely have clothes on their back, and they live from day to day. Some days they make it to eat, and other days they may not. Um, he, he just wants us to live the right way and take care of ourselves and do the best we can to help each other. It's, um, do you remember at the beginning, uh, at my last video, I said how God doesn't want us to think, well, we have more money, so we're higher up and we're better than you and you don't count. And then down here, somebody who doesn't have as much money, they aren't worth anything. And I said, it's not that. Uh, what God wants us to do is come together in his hands together and, and form a family, um, a loving family that's supportive of each other um, because what gifts we have, another doesn't have, but yet we might be able to teach another person gifts that we have. It comes easy to us, but it's difficult for them. Um, I'm finding this out uh, here at home because uh, my husband Chris has a computer most of the time. That's why I don't get to do videos all the time because of his schoolwork. Um, he takes online classes um, through uh, Colorado Technical University is where it's at. And he is getting his bachelor's degree in computer sciences uh, IT, the IT program, and he's learning, he hasn't gone back to any schooling, uh, any type of, of college work at all, this is the first time he's ever been to college, and he's, let's see, I'm 50, so he's 46 now, and he just started schooling April 2nd, and, you know, he, he did truck driving for over uh, 17 years and then for the last let's see two and a half years almost three years in April it'll maybe April it was three years um, anyways um, it doesn't matter it, it my, my thoughts get lost too easy um you know, he's never been back to school, so he doesn't quite understand certain things. And with his classwork being online, he can have it come over the speaker on the computer, or he'll put headphones in and listen to it with his headphones, which is fine if, if I'm trying to do stuff from my personal thing, too. And he'll be listening to it, and he might not quite understand the computer sciences stuff but what the instructor is telling him I understand because I already went to school and earned my associate's degree in um, business office careers and so I know a lot about the computer uh, programs on the on the computer hard drive itself and how they interact. I did a lot of database management. Um, I entered part numbers and builds of materials and cost data information and um, billings and uh, quotes for new products, stuff like that throughout different areas in in different jobs I've had so to me it it's familiar because I I went to class for for three years because of the fact that I wanted extra credits toward my degree and then on top of that my on-the-job experience and learning the different things I've learned a lot of um, real estate management for property management stuff and then I've learned a lot of engineering um, stuff and human resources so I have a lot of that background I uh, I don't have the the ability to do that anymore due to my arthritis 
and my brain focus gets off a lot. So, okay, so let's go back here to this next part. We've pretty much talked about our repentance. Um, we're in Galatians 5. I read that. Okay. Okay, so I guess the next part is acknowledgement. Oh, no, I did want to read this other part cause, because it, I was reading it through it in my Bible. And it says, uh, Galatians, page 1584, it's the Godology, which is um, reflective of the person of Christ. So um, I do want to read that real quick. And it's just a short little bit here. Um, it says, Christology, the person of Christ. Because God's plan of salvation depends on his being the God-man, the study of Christ's nature and person, known as Christology, is central to Christianity. If a Christological position is in error, other doctrines will also suffer. As God, Christ is creator, Colossians 1, 15, head of the church. So that it'll talk about head of the church in Colossians 1, 15. In Colossians 1, 18, it talks about his highest authority. In Matthew 28, 18, it is an, shows that he's an upholder of all things. In Hebrews 1, 3, and he's the king of kings. In Revelation 17, 14, as man, he is the son of a woman. In Galatians 4, 4, he's a mediator between us and God. And in 1 Timothy 2, 5, it's, he's, uh, it talks about bond servant. Philippians 2, 7, and a high priestly, and in Hebrews 7, Hebrews 7, 11 through 22, three important standards are part of an, an evangelical Christ, Christology. The reality of his two natures, he is both God and he is man. The integrity of his two natures, they are not contradictory, and the unmingled union of these two natures is one. Each nature is independent of the other because the incarnation is a mystery. In 1 Timothy 3.16, much controversy was generated in the early church as Christ was not divine, believing that God chose the man Jesus to be a Messiah because Jesus had fulfilled but more than man. The Gnostic, not G N O S T I C S, Gnostics denied that Christ was fully human. All of these heresies were refuted by the Council of Chalcedon in AD 451, which declared that Jesus is truly God with undiminished deity and truly man with full humanity in John 1 14 Acts 17 3 Hebrews 2 14 and it says he is prophet in John 6 14 and John 7 40 he's the priest uh, in Hebrews 3 1 Hebrews 4:14 4, and he's the king in Psalms 2:6 and Micah 5:2 and it says he also John 1:4 note chart on 
the definitive Christology passages note on heresies in first I thought CO was Colossians, but I think it's Corinthians instead of Colossians because it doesn't have any L behind it like that other one did. So, um, basically, what it's what it's asking us to do is just keep ourselves under check. Um, and one thing I want to reiterate, uh, I, I want to go back on a little bit real quick. Um, you know, it was talking about people not drinking and not uh, be, being drunk. It's not that uh, some religions believe that drinking is a sin. Some religions believe that it's okay to drink, but drink in moderation and do not become drunk where you're out of control and being um, a nuisance, I guess is the, the best way I can say it. Um, keep ourselves under control and just not um, putting shame on your family because you've become violent or you did something crazy, you know, and, and that sort of thing. Um, you know, a, a glass of, of wine or so, you go to a party or you're... Um, you know, at a wedding and you want to toast the bride and groom, you know, that that's cool. Just don't get yourself sloshed so bad that, um, you know, it, it brings dishonor to God is, is basically what it's saying. So, um, okay. But I didn't want people to think I that the Bible says it is, sorry, I have to let my leg out. It hurts. Um, that it is not okay to drink because my religion says don't do that. It's not, uh, uh, that's not what I'm saying. Um, each religion is different. Each religion has their own beliefs and, um, in their communion that they do. Some churches do communion every week. Some do it once a month. Some do it once every six months and... Um, some use grape juice, some use wine. Uh, it just depends what church you go to and what the faith of that church is, what their beliefs are. So, um, that, that's all that's all about. So, okay. And then you're, uh, acknowledging God and it says, take one day at a time here and... Let's see, we read Galatians 5. And God wants us to acknowledge his specific authority over our own personal lives. And it's not it's not the same thing as praising him. We can praise God all day long with our lips, yet never deliberately surrender to his lordship with our hearts. Often in this part of my prayer time, I acknowledge how trustworthy he's been with his authority in my life. I recall how he has never misled me and that he calls upon me to submit to him for my sake, not for his. However, you may word it, I urge you to, to make a specific point of acknowledging uh, him as Lord. Voice your choice to voice your choice to bend your knee to him. You might also ask him for an immediate awareness when you are departing his authority. Acknowledge God's goodness to you in the past and thank him for for his faithfulness during times you've allowed him to be the uncontested Lord of your life. This is a very important step. Please don't skip it. And then intercession with the praise part um, is praying for others. And uh, I'm overwhelmed by how many people need prayer. The list is never ending. It, if you have a long prayer list, you might divide the list into days of the week. 
we probably pray more effectively over five or ten needs per day than fifty. Ask God to burden your heart with the specific people he wants you to intercede for each day. Intercessory prayer really works. Here's a tip. We save time when we don't tell God how to answer the prayer. So, um, basically, it's we're supposed to pray for others, pray for healing, pray for what God wants in our lives. Ask him to show him what he wants in our lives. But don't say, God, you're going to let me do this or else. Because that doesn't work with God. He has what he wants you to do, what he needs you to do. And he'll, he'll show you. Um, in fact, doing this Bible study was something I never thought I'd do. Not at all. Um, I've been to Bible studies. You know, I, like I said, I've taught Sunday school um, with the, the toddlers group and everything. But I never did I ever think I'd be on Facebook having a Bible study group on on Facebook, let alone a crochet page too, and kind of connecting the two. And, and Christian ladies can enjoy the arts of crochet and knitting and... Uh, jewelry making and um, spinning and thing you know things like that and there are so many pages out there that are just they're out for the dollar which I get it you you need your money to be able to to pay your bills and to survive but are you tithing to God are you giving back to God 10% of what he gave you and let me tell you this, you're thinking, I'm already working two jobs. I can't afford to tithe. I can't afford hardly to pay my bills. But yet you want me to give 10% of my money back to God. How can I do that? How can I give 10% of my check every week to God? And I need that for groceries or I need it for medicine or I need it for this or that. Let me tell you, tithing it's not a get out of jail free card. It's not a, okay, God, I tithe. Now you better give me this. It's not that. It's a way you can honor God with what he's allowed you to have and, and give back to him what he's allowed you to have. And he won't make you do without. And I can, I, I can give you two specific examples this week three specific actually this whole page of my praises I wrote down this week of what happened to us this week and I didn't even put one of them down because I hadn't written it down yet I it just happened yesterday and I, I didn't I didn't even write it down that old page and it's little printing on there. I use little print. I have a list of six praises for the week. Plus one more I have to still write down. So seven praises of where God took care of it for me and it wasn't an issue. Um Uh, I, I can't exactly describe how it worked, works I, other than, you know, we tithed faithfully, we, and I had set in my mind, we're not touching that money. That's God's money. I'm not touching that money because that's God's. And every time something happened, there was something there waiting for us. Um, one, for one instance, I was at the pharmacy. And I went to get my prescriptions. And I was like $20 short on my money for my prescriptions. Because I have to get a reimbursement for something. Um, 
and I hadn't turned in the receipts yet. Well, I got there, and I, I asked the pharmacist to hold them for me, and then I'll be back later on and pick them up within a week. And they were going to hold them. Well, this lady heard me say that I had to put two of my prescriptions back, and she came up and offered to pay for all my prescriptions for the month. And I said, oh, no, 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 I, I don't need that much money. I just, I, I'm just short, uh, you know, this little bit. And she wouldn't hear of me not taking my medicines uh, home with me. So she paid $20 of what m money I had uh, toward the prescriptions, and then I paid the rest with my debit card. And um, another thing happened. We were in at Ruler Foods here uh, where we live at. And I got in there and I rang up all my groceries and I paid cash because I knew I had a certain amount to pay with in cash and then the rest I'd pay on my debit card. And, you know, it wasn't a problem. And I went into the Ruler Foods and I gave them... A, Example is $33 I had in cash, exactly, no more. And we rang the, the groceries through, and I knew I had a certain amount on the debit card. Well, for some reason, my debit card wasn't going through, and I know the money was there because I checked before I went in the store. And uh, because our, our transactions come out immediately and stuff. So I checked before I went in the store, how much money I had to spend and everything. And I got up to the register and I paid the $33. Once, tried my debit card, it wouldn't go through. Twice, tried my debit card, it still wouldn't go through. And the third time, they called the manager and asked what we should do because if I run it through a third time, it would lock my car down for the whole, uh, like, until the weekend was over because it was. Um, like over like Friday or Saturday or something. So it would have been my car would have been locked down the whole weekend, and I couldn't have used it at all um, to to get groceries or pay the rest of the bills or whatnot. Um, and the manager there, I took some stuff off, and she came up there because she had to use her key, and something wasn't coming off the way it was supposed to come off, and all of that, and so. We, we told her what was going on and she goes okay and she she took off what she had to take off and then uh, she, she gave me like a, dis, a discount of some sort to help out and everything and then the the cashier was standing there and she goes oh I don't know. I just got to do this. And she went around and she ran her debit card through on my transaction and paid for my groceries because my debit card wouldn't work. And I was free to walk out the door and I didn't have to come back the next day and pay for those groceries that they paid for. I didn't ask for them to do that. I, I was frustrated because my card wouldn't work. And I knew the money was in there. Uh, I was very upset. But they blessed us with our groceries for that week. And I said, I said, do you know what a blessing this is to us? And she goes, yeah, I can tell by your behavior that you weren't expecting that. And I said, you're right, I wasn't. I'm very, uh, I, I'm taking it back by the fact that you did this and um anyways i told her what was going on in our lives and what had happened with our car and um you know how uh, my husband chris is doing home dialysis now and stuff like that and we've been through trainings and everything and so i i told her what happened and she just was in stunned at what we um were going through and she goes, well, I'm really glad. She goes, at Ruler Foods, we truly love our customers. 
and we do what we can to help them when we can. And um, I just, I was, I was so blessed that day and so overwhelmed. And I knew God did it. And I thanked him right away. I'm walking out the door and I'm crying, you know, and I'm, I'm going over to go meet the bus and everything. And, and I'm crying this whole time saying, God, thank you. Thank you for what you did. Thank you for providing for us, even though we didn't ask it for it. You know, he showed me phys in physical evidence, you know, that he was in control. He, he took care of our needs, of what we needed supplies-wise, you know, for our food and stuff. Um, because we had extra expenses with Chris starting home dialysis. We had to get some uh, certain supplies for him to do that. And um, he has, uh, Chris's kidney is starting to slow down with his function even more than what it was um, two years ago when he was in the hospital, uh, almost three years ago when he was in the hospital for kidney failure. Um, he basically has to do dialysis every day to keep the fluids off of him because if he doesn't do dialysis every day and remove the fluids, basically what he'll do is he'll drown in his own fluids or he'll have heart failure because it puts so much pressure on the heart and squeezes the heart. And um, so he may, say for instance, he'll drink a 52 ounce mug of drink. We have these cups so that we know how much water that we drink. Um, this is a 52 ounce mug from a gas station called Thornton's out of Champaign, Illinois. And um, I fill it clear full of ice and then I fill it with water every day. I drink two to four of these a day depending if it's hot and that sort of thing. So he drinks one of these a day uh, sometimes too, you know, he, that's what he was doing because he didn't have to wash his fluids at first. And then he's only, he takes in two liters. This is basically like, uh, a, um, a liter for each cup. So he was taking in a two liter bottle, for instance, or, um, two, two liter bottles. I can't remember exactly the, the ratio of it, but he's only putting one liter out uh, in urine, and the rest will stay in, in his body, because the his salt content in his body was keeping all of the toxins stuck inside of his bloodstream and his system, and it, it wasn't releasing it, and they had to do the heavy pull bags on it, which means the fluid is a higher concentrate which grabs the salt and pulls it out of the system um, in fact while we were doing dialysis training so he can have his machine here at home um, through two or three of the days he had to take one of those bags in of the high concentrate to dialysis with him come on Rizzo it's okay um, come on baby come on you can make it uh, anyways he had to take two or three of those bags in with him for his treatment so that um, they could pull the extra fluid off because he gained just overnight like five to ten pounds worth of water fluid so um, it, it took two or three days to get all of that extra back off of him and all that so he's doing dialysis every night at bedtime um, I hook him up somewhere between 8 and 10 o'clock at night but we have to have a 10 uh, 8 to 10 hour window from when he starts to when he stops on his dialysis so um, like tonight he went to bed early he we had him hooked up by 8 o'clock at night because he has to be unhooked by 8 o'clock tomorrow morning so we can go to church so um, it's, it's a lot of change. I'll show you tomorrow his room and how we have it set up for now and stuff. Um, it's a 
a lot of change for us. So, um, but if it helps them, then that's a good that's a good thing. So, um, I think for right now, this is a lot of information that we're covering. Um, I'm going to stop here, and tomorrow I'll start in again with the part intercession um, where we pray for others, and we also pray for ourselves. There's two kinds of intercessory prayer, and then uh, there's supplication for self and equipping ourselves for, uh, uh, it says supplication for self helps for us know us to know God that doesn't make sense the way that's printed and then um, and then it talks about Thanksgiving so there's some more scriptures I'll read to you tomorrow and then day one is just literally one page so it's it's not gonna be hard um, one thing that I can say with the praise and the fact that God takes care of things for you um, even though you may not see it going on immediately and you're to the forefront of your immediate urgent needs um, I can tell you for a fact that God is working on it if you're faithful to God if you are in his word if you're interactive with him with your prayer for not only yourself but others if you are of service um, at your church if you are of service in your community and you use your gifts to help others learn and know more about God if you're in tune with God and what he wants in your life he's going to provide for you and it's baby steps you know it um, in the last almost three years now since Chris um, went into kidney failure. It, it's been a very long road, a very scary road at times, and I've cried and I've been angry, and I've even yelled at God and said, why are you doing this to me? Why am I here? Why am I stuck here of all places? Why can't I be home? Why can't I see my kids? Why can't this happen? Why won't this person leave us alone? Um, it, it's been very intense for Chris and I for six years. Um, it's about to come to an end, and I can only thank and praise God for that. But he's always been there for us. We've never been without, not ever. Um, we've always, always had a roof over our heads, even if it was just a car. We have, or a semi-truck, you know, we've always had food to eat. It may not be the perfect food, but we have food to eat. And it's taking you out of your security and your and your securities in life and growing you and helping you to be able to be there for others when it's their their trial and error time um there's things that started clear back in 2013 that finally we got prayer answered to it in 2019. It took that long to get prayer answered, to get bad behaviors stopped. That's the only way I can say it, is bad behaviors stopped. Um... I have been under intense amounts of stress and pressure and 
anger at times that it was beyond what I could deal with emotionally. And that's calming down now. You know? Um, and, and I can only thank God for that. That's the only way it's happened is because God softens someone's ear, God softens someone's heart, and they listened to what we said, they understood what we said, they checked into it, and they fixed it. They finally fixed it after six years. It took six years to fix it. And I just, I'm at a relaxed, semi-relaxed state. Um, you know, we have a roof over our heads. It's not in the best neighborhood. Um, but it's not as bad as we've been in. Um, we've been in some pretty bad areas before. Um, it's really opened my eyes to how different it is in my hometown than say Dallas where we lived at before and it's not all areas of Dallas it's just certain areas um, I've seen things I hope my children never see um, I've seen bodies pulled off of the trains or the buses because they had overdosed on drugs and passed out and started seizures on the trains or on the um, on the buses and they had to get them emergency medical help. Um, I walked up, there was a gentleman in a wheelchair on the platform of the train station all slumped over and I couldn't get a response from him. He couldn't, he couldn't respond to me at all and he was sweating profusely. And because of the fact I knew my former mother-in-law um, and my um, mother had diabetes, that profuse sweating was one of the signs of diabetes. And so I had to call 911. I told them what the issue was. I told them that I think they're in diabetic shock of some sort because there's profuse sweating cold and clamminess to the skin. I just told him, you know, I can't, I can't get the guy out of the wheelchair. Um, he was, had tied himself in somehow, and I didn't know how to untie what he had tied. And, um, you know, teenagers, men in their 20s, pull off the, off the trains or off the buses, laying them down on the sidewalk to get them laid out to do CPR or smelling salts or, you know, um, anything to try to get them pulled back around. And it just, the homelessness, yes, there's homelessness here in Illinois. Um, where I'm from, I do know over in a few places there's homeless, pla you know, homeless people around in certain areas but it's not as bad as down in, in like the larger cities like in Dallas um, or even Denver. Um, it's pretty disheartening to see what some people are going through. Um, it could always, I always tell myself, it could always, always be worse than what we have now. Always. So, just, you know, just pray about things for others. Pray about things for yourself, yes. But pray about things for others. And be grateful and thankful to God and listen to what He's telling you. If you, if you listen with your heart, you pray and you ask the Lord to come to you in, in, in the Spirit. Lord, come to me in, in the Spirit. He will if you ask him and invite him to. Um, the first, the first time I had 
where God came to me in the spirit, I felt him, and I felt safe, but yet at the same time, I was scared, but yet excited, all at the same time, because I was like, you know, I, did, I, I had a little, like, okay, I know, I, I, I know that's got to be you, God, is that you, God, show me it's you. And it just take it took my breath away, you know, and I just felt warm, comfort, and peaceful, and just calmness overcome me. Just a calmness overcome me. And I've I've talked to God many times where you know I'll be praying and then. I feel his spirit and his presence with me so strong. I can't. It's like. It's almost like. Bowing down. Before God and. Um, you know how. It's, it's more than just like a curtsy or a bow. For the king or queen of say England. And I don't mean to be disrespectful. It's not that. It's just... His presence is so pure and so holy and so overwhelming. You can't help but feel like you have to honor Him. And surrender everything to Him and just let Him... Come in, you come into his presence and things. Um, I know many of you out there who will know what I'm talking about because you've experienced it yourself. For those of you who don't think you've experienced it, uh, ask God to come and reveal himself to you. Ask him to show you who he is and that he's guiding your steps every step of the way and he will every time every time you ask might it, it might take a while but just keep praying don't ever give up because you never know when's going to be the day that God grants your prayer and your wishes of Lord how can I get past this situation and and make things right again or make things better again? Um, for me, that's a hard, hard one because my my daughter and I were very close at one time, and now we're estranged because I voiced. Um, my opinion on how I felt that her second fiance had done when he canceled the wedding and how I felt about it and other other things but I didn't do it to hurt her and I didn't do it to be mean to him I just I just felt like he wasn't the one for her. He wasn't ready to grow up yet and be the adult he needed to be to be connected to my daughter. And we'd always been straightforward, honest about everything. Um, from anything from that blouse looks horrible on you. Mom, go change your blouse. Why don't you put this one on? It'll look better. Anything like that simple to the very difficult issues of life. And, you know, I told her why. I said, you know, I've dealt with well, this one instance for, you know, at the time it would have been four years or so. And I said, it's very stressful. It hurts. It's not something I want to see you go through. Um, you deserve better than that. And it wasn't that 
I put her on a pedestal that she was better than people, than anyone else. It's just she deserved better treatment than she was receiving. And, you know, I, I said it wrong, and it hurt her. And she hasn't spoken to me since. So the only thing I can do is just continue to pray about it. And, um, you know, maybe God will soften her heart and soften her ear. And maybe we'll be able to talk again soon. So, Well, it looks like I've already talked your ears off for an hour and a half. Um, I just, I use my examples of my own life so that, you know, it helps you understand that, yes, God is there. Um, you know, I've, I've been through a lot, even at 50 years old. Most people think I'm not 50, but yeah, I'm 50. And I tell them what I've been through in my life and the different things that have happened and they just look at me like there's no way and but I honestly feel that God has had me go through all these different things so that I can be there for others with my compassion and my own learning experience and say it's not just you you know God chooses us and we have to be willing to say, yes, God, I want to follow you. Yes, God, I want to be, want you to be in my life. It's not anything he's going to force on you. It's not anything I'm going to force on you. All I'm going to do is tell you the Bible study, what the Word of God says out of the Bible itself, and give you the notes that I can come up with. And that's all I can do. And if you ever want to talk to me, you can message me on uh, Facebook Messenger. It's great. You can message me from my uh, Crochet Blessings page, uh, Crochet Blessings 2019. Or you can also message me from my personal page, which is Carrie Aptha, which is C-A-R-R-I-E. The C is capitalized. And then Aptha, A is capitalized P T H A uh, 1968 uh, no just carry at the no 1968 um, so you can message me on Facebook Messenger I get that the quickest um, my regular text messages I kind of ignore those because I get a lot of junk text messages um, but yeah, you can you can send me a message on Facebook Messenger, or if you're in the United States, um, you can call uh, my my num my phone number is posted there on the Crochet Blessings website, where you can contact me. And if I don't answer your number, it's just because I either one don't don't know who's calling. Or two, I may be in a doctor's appointment for myself or for my husband, Chris. So just leave a message. And, um, you know, if you want to leave a phone number too, that's great. And then I'll call you right back as soon as I'm available. Um, I just, like I said, I might just be at the doctor's appointment. My phone may have died. You know, that kind of thing. So um, my, my phone is my lifeline just like everybody else's is. So, um, okay, I'm going to go ahead and end with prayer now. And like I said, if there's any prayer requests, don't hesitate to uh, post it on the Crochet Blessings page. You can send me something on Messenger too if you want. But it's okay if you post things for yourself for prayer requests. Um, and your projects that you make, um, if you're selling stuff like fibers or um, finished products, you know, stuff like that. Um, for instance, yarn, um, 
hand dyed yarn, hand spun yarn, um, th that sort of thing, animal feed, uh, there's been people with wreaths and jewelry, um, those are all I can really think of right now that's been posted, um, but go ahead and and for those things, for the crafty things, you can post like once a week if you have uh, a link to your own page. You can post your link to your page. Um, maybe, say for instance, you have a picture of uh, a, a wreath you might be have for sale. Post a picture of your wreath and then say, um, for instance, this is my page link. Please stop by and see if we can help you with any of your home decor or decorating needs, stuff like that. Um, that, that that'd be okay once a week. Um, as far as pictures of your personal, uh, like crochet and knitting and loom knitting, um, you know, stuff like that, you can show that. Uh, any time that's okay to show that kind of thing um, every day for that matter but if you are posting pictures it has to be um, preferably in English so that we um, can all read we, we can all read it you can still have your own language there as long as it has a way that we can read it in English um, that would be great um, also a link say for instance you're working on a baby blanket and you're working on a specific pattern like the midwife blanket if you post that you pictures of your uh, midwife blanket what I want you to do is link uh, post the link to the site where you got the pattern from Say, for instance, you got it from Fiber Spider on YouTube. You would copy his link on his page uh, of the pattern he, you know, the video tutorial he did. And that could be done um, when you go to share it and tell it copy link. And then put it on the Crochet Blessings page on Facebook and paste it in there along with your picture in it and then post it and it'll upload it up onto the page. Those are fine, but it has to have a link back to and, and give credit to the person who designed it and where the, the link came from um, because it can be considered, uh, I think it's called plagiarism, something like that. Um, it's been a while since I did all that English stuff in school. Um, and you don't want to take credit for someone else's work when it's not their work um, that's being posted. Um, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask. Uh, I don't mind answering questions. So, Okay, so let's pray. Dear Lord, um, thank you for all of us who have gathered here for this Bible study. And the first little bit is an awful lot to learn for anybody. And you know my talking, how it gets out of control at times. Um, I just give examples on, on how I can show them ways, Lord, that you have touched our lives, mine and Chris's lives, and how things have been really bad at times. And yet we still knew, without a doubt, you would be there for us and you would take care of our every need. And Lord, I ask you, for those who are in want, who truly have nothing and they need a place to live or they need um, they, they need furnishings for their home or they need food to eat. Lord, that you'll provide just the right resources for each of these people who are having need. Um, have them show them where it is you need them to go for this help be exactly precise where they see it without any 
second thought of it. It just comes natural, the thought process. Uh, like it's like, oh yeah, I didn't think of that. Lord, just help them understand what you're trying to, to tell them and help them be able to hear you. Lord, be with those who are sick and hurting. Maybe those who have lost loved ones, Lord. It's not an, an easy thing to go through physical ailments and losing loved ones. And we all heal and we all mourn and we all have our own timing in how quickly we can do these things. Our emotions need to be able to be back in check. Our spirit has to be refreshed and guided again and remove all the confusion that Satan puts on these lives and just open their hearts and their minds and their eyes to see what it is exactly is to come of all of this. Lord, I have people close to my own heart who are going through very tough issues they're facing after losing a loved one. Very dear to my heart, Lord. Please show them exactly what it is you want their life to, to become now. You know, should they stay? Should they come back home? Open doors for uh, these agencies which will allow the new child to come home as well, Lord. I humbly ask that you continue to bless all these lives of our viewers and our lives here at home. And Lord, I thank you so much from the, from the depths of my heart. Thank you so much for being with us through every terrible thing that happened. But I also thank you for being with us through every wonderful thing that's happened as well. And shown me that you've always been there. You've always had my back. You've got things under control. Lord, I'm used to doing things myself and you've shown me I need you more than anything else in this whole world. And without you, I'm nothing, Lord. And I know and I want my life to be at your disposal, Lord. And I commit myself to you and I submit myself to you, Lord, that this Bible study will be a blessing and that others will see that it's not not me saying oh you're a bad person and you've done wrong I just want them to feel uplifted and feel your presence throughout this whole this whole time thank you Lord for all your blessings in Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Um, I, I'll say one last thing. Just know that I'm here. Anytime, day or night, you can message me. Um, I keep the ringer on my phone on, so I'll hear it if it goes off. And if you need prayer... I'll do my very best to hear and wake up and be there for you all. And uh, then I'll continue, of course, praying outside of that on my own. Well, I love you all very much, and I thank you for tolerating this long video. And I just pray that you all have a wonderful weekend. Let's yeah, today's Saturday, tomorrow's church, and I'll upload this, and I hope that this is a, 
a bit of encouragement tomorrow for those who can't get out to go to church. And uh, I'll try to finish this up uh, tomorrow after I, I get back home. I'll finish up chapter one. And I'll try to get them done somewhere between Thursday and Saturday. That way they can be uploaded by Sunday morning for y'all to um, in, enjoy during your church time if you want. Or you can save it for any day of the week. I just have to be careful to schedule around Chris's online classes so that he gets his homework uh, turned in on time and everything. So, y'all have a good rest of the day and be blessed.